Um, so what I like the most about doing pop-up tea, tea shops is that I get to speak to people and exchange with them and learn about their lives and they also offer me their feedback about the teas. So it's really about you know exchanging with people and I, I really like that about it. And it also allows me to present my teas in another way because most of the time they're either sold on the market or on the website so it's uh, an opportunity for them to get to try the teas directly and, and really exchange. Um, so the, the contact really, human contact and getting to talk to them, that's something that I don't get to do very often, um, except when I'm on the market. So yes, when I get to see them, they tell me about you know their feedback about the teas really, so that's great. I get to talk to them. Yes, they're very curious about the teas. They want to know everything about the way it's been done, how it's been sourced, if it's been sourced ethically or not. So it's really great um, to get to, you know, to include them in the whole experience and tell them about the, the entire process that goes behind creating the teas. So I think the most difficult things about entrepreneurship is really just studying and uh, believing in your idea and not uh, you know, listening too much to the naysayers because a lot of the time when you start something, a lot of people will tell you, are you sure about that? Do you want to do this this way or that way? And even yourself, you will doubt a lot about your own idea. So I think the most difficult thing is to really get in there. And then once you're in there, another thing is to learn how to do a lot of things by yourself learn how to do things that you don't even necessarily want to do. For example, I hate math. I hate anything that touches numbers or whatever, but it's something that you have to do eventually because if you don't do it, nobody else will do it. So I think this is two of the most challenging things, really. So the advice I would say, uh, I would give, would be to, well, believe in yourself. This is very cliche and woo-woo-woo, uh, but this is, this is true. You have to believe in your idea, um, all, all while listening as well to the feedback. Because a lot of people sometimes, you know, they have their, this idea in mind, and whenever they're given feedback, they take it the wrong way, they don't want to listen to any of it, but sometimes it can be very constructive. So I would say learn to choose the feedback you take in and make it gold. Right, so the idea to create De La Croce came from um, really my passion for teas that I've had ever since I'm a very little child. Both my dad and my mom initiated me to um, herbal teas and teas from a very young age because they're from Senegal and their um, teas are used as a, you know, with a medicinal kind of standpoint. So that's just how it really came to me, really. And then growing up, I did a business school, so it only made sense for me to create a business from a passion that I've had for all this time. And so that's how Tela Croze was born. Um, okay, so once I was sure about the idea, um, so I, I went to, in, to China three years ago, about three years ago, but that was for a completely different purpose. I was doing an internship there, and so I took this opportunity to get in touch with tea plantations that were there, and that's how uh, it all really started and became a reality. Yes, of course, there was a lot of euphoria when I started, when I created uh, the, the brand, because it's always great to see your idea coming to the light of day and becoming a reality. But I keep this euphoria every single day, every single day that I thrive and that I see that I'm achieving something more. Uh, although it's not the, you know, the end of the journey, I, I still have this euphoria and I think it's really part of the the entire passion, you, already, you always keep this euphoria anyway, and I think that's what um, keeps you, gets you going. Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Creating tea in the country of teas, it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. But actually, it's, quite, it's more challenging than you would think, because I noticed, and it's no 
I don't mean it as a, a mean thing towards English people, but they are very reserved and a bit close-minded when it comes to their teas. It's either English breakfast or Earl Grey. So initiating them to teas that are, have a bit more fantasy is actually more challenging than you think. But yes, exactly, and they have also yeah, very specific kind of teas that they like. It has to be black with a little dash of milk, maybe some sugar, but if you present them with teas with coconut, for example, or even rose, they, they're a bit, you know, they have this first reaction of being, ooh, that's not what I usually take. So it's actually more challenging than you would think, yeah. Eventually, you'll convince them, yes. <laughs> So I, I started alone, but I, that was not necessarily a choice of mine by choice. Um, it's just because, well, it's still a very small structure, so obviously that's how I, I had to do. But as we grow, um, I would like, I would very much love to have other people, to have a solid team around me of people who are passionate about teas and who can uh, help me bring it much further. Yes, of course. So of course, yes, internet does have limits, uh, and one of them is that I sell, I sell food, right, or a beverage, and people have to have a feel of it, they have to taste it, and they have to smell it. It's impossible to buy teas online like this. So that's why I really like, um, you know, these pop-ups, because it allows me to not only meet people, but it also allows people to come and meet the teas, and have a feel of them, and taste them, and have the whole experience. So each teas there are released uh, by collections, collection of three teas depending on the seasons. And so each collection, it tells, uh, well, a story, obviously. And each tea as well is like a chapter in this story. So for example, if we take our last collection, which is Et Dieu créa la femme and God made woman, uh, which is our first green tea collection, by the way, um, each tea has a name. Um, the name of one woman, um, one great woman. So one is Simone for Simone Veil, another one is Frida for Frida Kahlo, and another one is um, Date Yala, the Senegalese uh, woman. Um, and I chose to give them their names because when I was doing, you know, the little mixtures, the, t the blending, I thought, well, I feel like this ingredient would match this personality better. So yes, it was not given just like this randomly. I felt like each ingredient could be cor corresponding to each or each personality. Uh, we are very selective about, of course, the tea leaf itself. So all the plantations, the tea plantations we work with are all ethical tea partnership certified, which means that not only um, the teas, the way the tea is cultivated respects the environment and no chemicals are used, but also the workers, they are paid decent wages. So it allows them to have a decent way of life. And so there's that, but also, we, so we're ethical, but we also, I mean, our teas really, um, they tell a story. And I think that the jury was sensitive to that. They tell a story and all the aromas that are chosen, the ingredients that are chosen, they participate to telling the story. So of course I was honored to get to get this uh, this award because the Great Taste Awards are the most coveted food awards in the world. Um, there are some very big brands that apply every single year. It's more than 15,000 brands applying for this award. So of course I was very honored by it and humbled. Uh, but it's not that's not it. You know, it's a recognition that shows that the people in the business know and acknowledge that the, the teas are quality teas. And so this, of course, is always uh, a very happy thing, but it's not, that's not it, you know, it's just, yes, it's an award, but that's not it. I'm happy for it, but it doesn't mean that now I, I have it all together and I know everything about teas. No, that's not what it means. It's just the industry saying, yes, your teas are great, but that's, that's not it, as I said, yeah. 
exactly tilacos or couture tees because um, it has all the elements of what couture fashion could be. Uh, it's handmade, there is a level of craftsmanship behind it, um, it also tells a story, it has creativity. So really these are elements that you find in haute couture as well. The clothes are handmade, same, it tells a story. There are collections as well. So that's why Tilak Rose are couture tees. Everything is handmade, hands-picked. So there's a real thought process behind it. And again, it's artisanship that goes behind it. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm pretty proud of what I've accomplished so far because uh, it's not nothing. So sometimes it's good to pose and look back and see what you've done, what you've, uh, what you've improved. But it's not the end of the journey. There are many things I still need to uh, do better and be better at because obviously it's a learning curve and a very steep one. So I, have, I still have many, many things to do and I don't feel like um, there's a... I don't feel like I'll, I'll ever be accomplished really because accomplished has this notion of okay now you're done and you've done it all and it's all perfect and it will never be perfect. So yeah, I'm, I'm still learning but I also know how to, to be proud of what has already been done.